Welcome to the first uh, Rhino tutorial. I think this might be the most important Rhino tutorial. So if you're going to watch any of them, just make sure to watch this one. It's really all the most boring Rhino tutorial. Um, but I'll try to keep it brief. And as you can see, when it opens, there are four viewports, perspective, top, front, and right, uh, all open simultaneously. And then you have sort of tabs and information everywhere else around you. Right, so you have uh, here your control panel, which we won't really talk about today. Here, your uh, buttons or your commands, and we will kind of uh, not talk too, about too many of those today. And then you also have up at the top, you have your command line, and down at the bottom, you have a little bit of additional uh, buttons that help uh, with uh, managing your, um, your preferences. Okay, so these are really important and this is really important. And so we're gonna talk about that for, uh, sort of today. So the first thing though, let's start talk about are the viewports. So as you guys can see, I have modeled just very quickly a box uh, and you can see in this perspective view, I can zoom, pan around it, move around it. And you're gonna say, well, but right now you're only seeing the line work. And so we'll talk about that in just a second. You can see that box then, if we look at it, we can see the top view of it, which would be essentially like a plan view. And then we can see the side view, side view from the front, side view from the right. And you can see, right, we've got basically all, it looks the same because it's a cube. Um, so these are essentially our elevation and our plan and our 3D perspective view that we can sort of look around. So um, important to note about the viewports is that you can always toggle between them. So for example, if you just want to be looking at perspective, so you have a little bit more screen, you can double click on the word perspective. And then you'll see now I'm just looking at that one viewport. If you need to go back and look at all of the other ones, you can just double click again, and it'll bring you back to this main four viewport um, uh, view scope, right? Um, if you need to change one of them, right, that's what you can see. All of them have this little triangle here, right? So you can just click on the triangle and you can see that there's a lot of options at the moment that you do that. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of them today, but I just want to show you, if you go to set view, you can tell that viewport to be any one of these different kinds of views, or you can even make your own, right? So I could also say, for example, I want this to be an isometric view and then the direction and then you will see that this and this are somewhat similar, but they are actually very different because one is a parallel projection and the other one, even if I move it, it's still a parallel line projection and the other one is a perspectival projection, right? So just to be clear, we can switch back and forth between these uh, different kinds of viewports. So that's the first thing to know about viewports. The second thing to know about viewports is that they have different viewing styles. And so once again, if I click on that little arrow, I can see that there's all these different styles of viewing that viewport. So right now, and the default when you open it is always in wireframe. So in a wireframe viewport, you only see that wireframe, the extents of the things that you're building um, and you don't see any of the surfaces or the forms. But if I switch to shaded, you can see here, I can now see that my cube actually is made up of six different surfaces, right? Um, I can switch back to wireframe, right, of course, but I can also go to all these others. There's a rendered view, in which case it takes a little bit of time to load, but you can see it shows you a little bit of an idea of what it would, you know, the shadows would look like. This is not accurate in terms of the way that light actually works, but it's just a kind of approximation. Um, and then you can see there are others. There's a ghosted view where you can, that way you can see through the object, but you can still see the surfaces. Uh, there's an x-ray view, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I tend to use just the shaded view a lot in the perspective, and I tend to leave the wireframe views in the other ones, okay? So that covers our viewports. Now let's um, quickly talk about um, how Rhino, how you tell uh, Rhino commands. So um, one of the ways that we tell Rhino commands is by going and clicking on the buttons. So for example, you can say here, this is a, a command to build a polyline. So I can just click on that. And now I can start drawing a polyline. 
And when I want to be done drawing that polyline, I have to press enter. So I press enter and that ends the command. So the, the, the enter button or the space bar both start and end commands. Okay, so that's an important thing to know. If you want to start a command, you press enter or space after you click it. Uh, and to end it, you do the same, okay? The other way to enter commands is to actually type them into the command line. And you don't actually have to click on the command line. The command line is always active. You can just always just start typing. And so I can say, type polyline, press enter or spacebar. And now once again, I can start making my polyline, okay? Uh, I could also type, for example, rectangle and I would start building a rectangle, right? So now you have a sense, you can always type in commands. And of course, at the beginning, you're gonna ask, well, how do I know what is a command and what isn't? And that just takes a little bit of practice, but you can also always look at what all the commands are in all of these tabs. So for example, in the, in the curve tab, you can see that if you type, these are all the different types of things that you can type. So if you type line or polyline or rectangle or polygon, or freeform, all of those will actually bring up different types of commands. And so I just want to show you that in all of the commands also, when I type, for example, uh, let's do polygon, the first thing you'll see is if you look at our command line is that it shows you some additional things or, or options really, right? for that command. And so, for example, with this polygon, the default is that the number of sides that it has are five, the mode is that it's inscribed, et cetera, et cetera. And so if I click, if I start my command, you will see now I'm building, right, a five-sided polygon. Now let's say I, I, I wanna do a six-sided polygon. What I would actually just do is before I start my command, I would just click on this and I would change the number. So let's say now I can type eight, press enter again. Enter always activates whatever you've just done. And now you can see I've, I'm building an octagon, right? So uh, from a pentagon to an octagon, right? Um, another important thing to note is just the same way that I just did that. The number of sites you'll see here that the N here is highlighted if I don't go over it, but just the N. So I can also just type N, enter, and then I can type eight, enter, and I can change it, right? So that's an important thing to note. So there's the command line. So that's, an, that's the way that you build objects and you start building things in Rhino is either by finding the buttons or by typing the commands, okay? So now let's talk about how you navigate inside of the viewport. So the different ways in which we move around space. So we can move around space in really in three different ways. We can pan, we can zoom, and we can rotate, right? And we end up doing a combination of all three in order to model and build around space. So for the first one, for panning, and on a PC, I'm gonna to talk to you as if because I'm using a mouse, and uh, that's because PCs don't have quite as robust trackpads usually as Macs, and so we will talk about them using a the mouse. So uh, for panning, in order to pan, you uh, hold and hold click the uh, right button and you hold shift, okay? And so that gives you, if you do that both at the same time, right? so you're holding the right button and you're holding shift, you can pan. Now, if I want to rotate, I just hold the right button on my mouse and I can rotate. And then zoom is the easiest one. And that's just usually the little scroll wheel in the center of the mouse. I zoom in and out, scrolling forwards or backwards, right? So those are the three ways in which we move. And the hardest one to remember is panning. It's probably also one of the most useful. And that's, as I said, you hold shift and you hold the right button and then you can pan. Okay, so that's really how we navigate inside of our 3D space. And then the final thing that I want to show you guys or talk to you guys about in this sort of uh, first uh, tutorial is this bottom part, which are some properties uh, and essential things to know about how to make your modeling more accurate. 
And so uh, I'm going to delete some of these things really quickly so that we can get them out of the way. But and now we can talk about uh, two things in particular. And the two things that we're going to talk about are the ortho and the O snaps. So um, as you can see, Rhino, when you're modeling in Rhino, um, you can sort of build things anywhere. And there is kind of like no base standard. Um, but if you turn your ortho button on, and that just means you click on where it says ortho, and you'll see it goes into bold, and that means that ortho is on. Now, if I try to build things, it tries to maintain them onto our orthographic uh, plane. So that means that it tries to build things that are perpendicular to each other based off of our x, y, z axis. And you can see here our x, y, z axis in this case is delineated by this sort of plane that you can see the extent of and this green and red lines. Those are our, our x, y, z, or sorry, our x and y axes. And you can see that their zero, zero starting point is right here where those two meet, right? So if I have ortho on, like I said, uh, things tend to orient then to that, to those two axes. Okay, so that's the first thing is to remember to always toggle on and off between ortho if you want to get perpendicular 90 degree square right angles, right? And then the other thing to note is that Rhino um, doesn't necessarily, if I don't have this OSNAP thing on, which I'll talk about in just a second, it, when you start placing things, right, it, it will put things anywhere, right? And as you zoom in and zoom in, you'll notice in this case, because I had the, the grid snap on, sorry about that, but you'll notice that it'll place them anywhere in space randomly. And so if I put this thing when I think it matches up with that point there, when I start zooming in more and more, I notice that actually I'm not quite matching, right? And so to get that to match, to be exact, because right now it looks exact, but it's actually not, I have to turn my snaps on. And in order to do that, to turn your snaps on, you actually just click your O snap. So once that thing is highlighted, now I get to select what I want to snap to. And that's what all of these options are. And so a lot of times you guys will build stuff and then you'll be confused as to why things aren't lining up or why you can't build surfaces. And that's because you forgot to have your O snaps on and to be snapping to specific points. And so once you turn your O snaps on, um, then you get these options. And the ones that I always keep on are end near point midpoint interception and perpendicular, okay? And so it, I'm gonna take this as a base and I'm gonna start making a new polyline and you will see here, this is an end, right? But it's also a point and an intersection because it's the intersection of this line and this line, right? It will also now, my, my thing will snap to anywhere near, which means anywhere on that line, right? But it will also slap to the perpendicular of that line to the midpoint of that line, right? And in this case, this is an intersection. And in this case, it would snap to an intersection here. And you can see if I can get this right. The intersection is not the end because those are not intersecting at the end, right? So, uh, and then I can click enter. And now I have a, a better way of making sure that uh, I am snapping to the things that I want. Okay, so remember these two, ortho and o snap, are incredibly important. You also have grid snap. Uh, I, it automatically turns it on. I tend to not use it because you know your grid is just an arbitrary designator that you uh, begin at, you know, the, you know that you turn on at the beginning, but not necessarily what the scale that you're working on. So, uh, but if you want to snap to your grid, you just also turn it on right there, right? Um, and that's it. That's all I have for our first tutorial.